Hey there, I'm Erica from Ever Educating, and this channel is teaching tips, tools, ideas, and resources for new college instructors. A couple months ago, I took part in an online summit, which was about using Google tools in the classroom. I presented about Google Slides, for example, and one presentation was about using Google Sites as a teacher dashboard. And so I thought in today's video, I'd do a tutorial showing you how to do exactly that, though in my own way, rather than the way that was showed during this presentation. So to clarify, I have already a video about using a free WordPress website to create your own personalized LMS. I'll link that below. But this is about creating a website that's just for you to make your life easier as an educator. I'll link below um, her information, the one who presented, so you have that perspective as well. But in this case, we're going to dive in. I'm going to show you my screen and how to use Google Sites to do this building. So here I am on Google Sites. And as I mentioned in the intro, Shannon Schoenbeck was the one who showed me about this idea of using Google Sites for what she calls a command center. And so in this case, I'm going to show you that aspect of it, but then I'm going to take it a step further into what I consider to be a full dashboard that you can create using Google Sites. So I did here was go to sites.google.com and we're going to go ahead and you can see here, there are some templates that you can start with, or you can start completely blank. And so in my case, I'm going to just go ahead and start completely blank to show you what it looks like. So here's a blank site. Um, all I did here was I entered a name for it, Erica's dashboard. You could enter that here as well. And that's what we'll copy over. So Erica's dashboard, um, then you could title it, whatever you'd like. So let's go with let's teach. Of course you can change various settings as you will. The point of this video is just to show you how to use a tool, not to actually do an intense design. But here's, you know, one approach here. You can change a header type if you want. So in this case, it had a banner, but you can make this larger. You can have the title only. You could have some, it to be a cover. So in my case, I like that construction here. You can go back, you can change the image. Potentially you want to spice it up a bit so it's not just black. So let's go ahead and let's say select this one. So you can just go through and do some editing as you would like. Now the goal here is, you know, as Shannon mentioned, the command center, it's basically a way to make it very easy to access everything you need as an educator, the things you use all the time. So rather than opening up your laptop and having, okay, let's go to Outlook. All right, let's go to the LMS. Now let's open another one for today's readings. And let's open another one for the Kahoot we're gonna use today and so on and so forth. You don't have to do that manually. And you also don't have to have all those tabs open for a long period of time to save time as well. Instead, you can do this. So let's say you're looking through here and like, okay, what do I want to add, right? You have these various content blocks. You have these various options as well of things to insert. You can do a table of content. You can kind of look through here and see what works well but we're gonna keep it as simple as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's say, you know, if you click here, now you have four images and you can add titles to them. So this might be an option if you want it to look a bit prettier, where you have here, let's say an image of the Outlook logo, and then an image here of your LMS logo, and an image here of a book to signify the readings and here for Kahoot, right? So you can make it a bit prettier if you want, but if you want to keep it really simple, right? So let's go ahead and add a text box. And so this text box will be called Kahoot. Okay. And then you can go ahead and you want, you can resize it. It's let's say it's going to be here. And now you have Kahoot. Maybe you want to center it again, change things up as you'd like. Now we're going to add another text box. Okay, it's here. I want to drag it up. Okay, so now I've dragged it up. And this next one is LMS. Once again, we, we want to center it, but first we'll size it. Right, and so you can see the different lines that shows the sizing. So this is equal to Kahoot. And now once again, we center it. And so you can create, you know, these text across the screen of the links you're gonna use all the time. And so now you go in and you link it, right? So www.kahoot.com or whatever it is, the website name, the LMS, so Canvas, and so on. 
And so what you would do with this site then, once you publish it and have it easily available, you just have one link here, let's say, as a bookmark, and it opens to this web page, and then you can click the ones you need for that particular day. So it's making it less cluttered on your screen, and it's not requiring you to keep the tabs open because opening them anew is very quick because you have them all in this one place. You don't have to use text, you know, for example, again, there's different ways of making it a bit more visually appealing. You can also do buttons down here, and so you can name the button, for example, Outlook, and then again, include the link, insert, and now you have that, and you can kind of figure out what style you like the most when it comes down to it. And you can also edit it again if you need to, right? So here is another way of doing it. And as you notice here, if you wanna go ahead and look into colors, so there's section colors, image colors. So let's say you wanted this instead. So now it's gray as a background. In this case, now it looks like this. So you just kind of go through and experiment as you'd like. So that's the command center portion where it makes it, again, very quick to get to what you need. Another option though that, you know, is why I like, you know, the idea of this when I first learned about it through her presentation was not just having what you use all the time up here to make it easy, but you can do other things with your dashboard as well. And so for example here, maybe you want to go ahead and have, let's say, this one where it's an image, a title, and a little description here. And so perhaps you'll have a section for each of your courses. So this isn't in the sense of making a teaching portfolio, like I mentioned last week, because that's more the audience are other people. This is more for you. So potentially you're an adjunct, let's say. You might teach in multiple places at once with multiple different LMSs. And maybe you're moving around, you don't stay there for long, you're finding the right fit for you career-wise. And so you lose access to your courses once you're no longer working for that university. And so in this case, you can use this site as a storage space to make it really easy to see, okay, you know, this is English 170. Here's a quick description of what this course was about, right? Um, and here's an image that kind of really reminds you of, it depends, maybe you want an image of, you know, 2019 to show the year you taught this course, or maybe you want an image that reflects the content of the course itself. And so again, now you'll have this section and you can do the same thing as above. You can have a list of resources to make them very easy to find. And so perhaps you have a link to the major assignments and that might be a Google file, right? For now, I'm just gonna put my website for these. And so now you have that. And then maybe another one there. And this one is gonna be the you know, online fairy tales that you assign to students. You know, here's one website that had the collection of, let's say, grim fairy tales. And again, you can go ahead and move this as you'd like as well. And then you keep going and you keep going. Of course, it doesn't have to just be buttons, right? You can also write text here. It's a, a website builder, but I'm thinking of a way of using this just as a resource collection. So at the top here, you can have a little title saying, you know, my command center, and it's all of the ones you use all the time for your current teaching situation. Now, potentially, again, if you're an adjunct teaching at multiple universities, then you might have here, it's at a text box, and this is, you know, one university. So let's say ISU. And then you can go ahead, it's, you know, a heading to make it bigger. Maybe you wanna center it, okay? Bold it, whatever the case may be. And so you have those. And then you go ahead and add some more text. And this one is a different university that you're at. And so now you have the links for one university, the links for the next university, and so on down the page. So once again, very easy to open things up. And then again, at the back here, maybe you have the resources for different courses so that as you move from various universities or and you find your right fit, it's easy to say, okay, I wanna teach this course now in this university, let me go back and see all these resources, all these materials, 
and you open it up really easily and then you build your course in your LMS or you teach it, whatever the case may be, after the fact, All right? So this is just basically an archive at the bottom and at the top, it's an easy access list of links and resources. This is, again, just one way of using Google Sites. If you wanted to make it your website, maybe you wanna have a personal academic website, you can use Google Sites to do that. You know, if you wanna go ahead and create a teaching portfolio using this free site, you can do that too, to share with other people. This is just one way of using this particular tool. Now you can also explore again, like this is like one page, right? I'm thinking of a long scrolling page here, but potentially you could add different pages. So if you wanted to make it more complex, this is the home page, but then you could add a page that's specifically about the one course. And then here's another page that's specifically about this next course and so on. So there is variety here on how you can do this. You know, in, in my case, I'm just talking about one particular page. So for example, if you go ahead and add a new page, maybe you call it the archive. So that second half of my idea here, done. And now you have archive here as another page. So you have the same look up top here, but then you can start building and inserting down below. So it really depends, you know, you can, and then you switch back and forth. So maybe you wanna have this first page, the home page is Go to properties here, the command center portion with all your links. And then the second page here is your archive with, again, the collection of your course materials. And you can build obviously as you need from there. This is just kind of some ideas of how to use this particular tool in this way. Themes here, just so you know, you know, again, I have a very simple theme, but you can kind of go through and see if something else appeals to you. For example, here or this one, change up the color if you want, but I like it pretty simple here. A couple of quick things to notice, the table of content is very similar to Notion, where if you add it, it automatically curates the table of content for you using the headings in your page. So if you're using the headings correctly, you can curate this automatically. In case you have a long page, you can go ahead and click and get to exactly where you wanna go. If you want to make it a bit neater, for example, you can do collapsible group. So let's say you add that here, and then again, you have, let's say ISU, and then here you have, you know, your links. Then what this does is it hides it, right? So you can click the arrow to open it and close it as you need, right? So it's collapsible or not. but I think you can be pretty neat without using that feature. I just wanted to point it out in case you wanted to use it. And you, once you have it all set up, you can go up here to publish and you can give it the web address. Right now, obviously it's using the name of the particular site. You can buy a custom domain if you want to, but there's no point here because this is meant to be just for you. You can also do who can view my site and you can manage that. And you can say that it's not public it's restricted. Only people with access can open it. And then you click here, publish. So now you want to view it, click view down here. And here it is, your command center slash dashboard. So now what you do is you would just save this to your bookmarks bar. And every day you go to teach, you just click onto it and it opens up and you click, okay, go to Kahoot, go to my LMS, go to my Outlook, and everything pops up super easily for you. If you're creating a new course, you go down here, like, okay, I'm looking for resources from, you know, English 101, scroll down, scroll down, here it is. I want that assignment, okay, go to the assignment page and so on and so forth. So really it's a way to make life a lot easier for you by compiling your materials. And just so you know, if you want to view it later on, when you go to this page on the right here, you just click and you can say view published site. Um, if you want to go ahead and make changes, you make changes and then you go ahead and republish it. If you want to unpublish for any reason, you can go ahead and click unpublish here. So, right, so the site will no longer be live. You can still make edits and publish again. So got it. And now it's once again unpublished. 
I mentioned that I learned about this at a online summit that I participated in, and I'm actually participating in another one later on this month. This one is for higher ed academics, talking about research out in the wild. I'll be presenting about being an academic YouTuber, so if that topic or potentially other topics about research interest you, I'll link below how to go ahead and sign up for the free summit. I'll see you next time with a new video. If you enjoyed this one, click like and let me know, and subscribe so you don't miss out on future content.